let's take a look about the period of a pendulum. So now, here's a nice little pendulum set up right where that spring used to be. There it is. It's swinging around real nice. All right. So a pendulum is a mass at the end of a spring. I'm sorry, string. The string is massless, a large mass at the end that's been displaced off to the side, and then it begins to swing back and forth. It looks like it's simple harmonic motion. So now let's actually see if it is, because then it'll be a whole lot easier to describe. So let's draw this out. Let's go back to the roller coaster. Whoa. So there's my drawing. There we are. So a pendulum has three. This is gonna almost work. There we go. So we are we are attached up here. We have a string of length L. The string is massless. That's very important. And then we have a mass down here on the end of some mass m, and it's swinging back and forth on this curved surface. All right, so now it kind of looks like it's rotating. We have an axis up here. Mass out here, and it's rotating around back, then rotating. Oh, I like that idea. Let's see. Let's see if we can sum up the torques. So, what do I have? Well, let's look at the forces on my uh, mass here. I have the force of gravity coming down, which is mass times gravitational field strength, and then I have the tension in the string. So those are my two torques. Let's see if we can sum them up. And this needs to probably be... I'm going to make you guys sick a little bit more here. Whoa, there we go. Whoa, there we go. Oh, wait. I can do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm learning all these cool things. All right. The sum of the torques. So I'm going to have... So this way is positive. So I have the torque due to gravity. Gravity is causing a clockwise rotation, so it's negative. And then I have the torque due to the tension. All right, let's pull this out. So the sum of the torques is negative the force of gravity times it's happening at length L times the sine of the angle between it which in this case is that angle. I'm going to call that phi. Oops, I called it theta already. Uh, do I know that? Um, no, I don't know that. Phi plus the torque due to the tension. So that's T times the lever arm, which is at L, times the sine of the angle between them, but the angle between the tension and the lever arm is zero, the sine of zero is zero. So now the sum of my torques are going to equal negative the force of gravity, which is mg times L times the sine of this angle phi. This angle phi is actually 180 degrees mgL. That phi is actually 180 minus theta because this is 180 degrees, and I'm subtracting theta. Now let's keep going. Wait a second. I know what the sine of negative mgl sine of theta. Well, okay, there's nothing exciting here. Looks like we're kind of stuck. So I'm going to reach into my physics notebook and pull something out, something out that you probably aren't very familiar with. This is why I'm a physicist. Some all angle approximation. This is 
awesomeness. What does it mean? If an angle is small, I'm going to define small here in a little bit, and measured in radians, in radians, here we go, are you ready? The sine of theta is approximately, the tangent of that angle is approximately that theta. It has to be in radians. Right now, there are math teachers who are feeling a twinge in the force. How small does this have to be? It's only when you have to be below 0 0.174 radians. Well, if you convert that to degrees, it's less than 10 degrees. All right. Feel it. It's awesomeness. Small angle approximation. Be careful. It's very dangerous. So let's throw that in there. What does this turn into then? Oh, it turns into, so what do we got? We got the torques. All right, where am I going? I got lost. I got so excited, I got lost. Where am I going? So the sum of the torques have to equal uh, negative MGL theta. There it is. MGL theta. MGL sine theta. Here we go. The mass depends on what I'm hanging off the end. G depends on what planet I'm on. L is the length of the string, or in this case, the, uh, the length to the center of the mass. All of those only depend on your setup. They're not going to change. They're a constant. And now I have this thing over here, I have this theta, right? That's my displace displacement. And now I have also this negative sign up here. Where else have I seen a negative sign with a constant that depends solely on the situation and then based on the displacement, that negative sign means it's a restoring torque. What? That sounds familiar. We're also a force. I've got some uh, constant times some displacement. That's in. A, that's right. You can uh, we can approximate the pendulum as a spring, provided we are within. We're using a small angle approximation. Well, let's treat it like a spring. I remember what the period of a spring is. That's 2 pi, oh shoot, I have that somewhere. Oh, I do. It's 2 pi root m over k. But I want the period of a pendulum. So the period of the pendulum, if I'm just going to, if this is for that, how do I make this that? I'm going to use my symmetry argument, meaning they kind of look alike. So I'm going to have a 2 pi root, my k is this thing, mgl, mgl, oh, mass. That mass is actually a measure of inertia. How hard is it for that spring to pull it back? But I need the rotational analog. That's i. This is rotational inertia. It's not something covered in this class, but the rotational inertia for a, oh, whoops, the rotational inertia for a mass at the end of a string, of a end of a massless string is the mass of the object that's there times the length of the string that it's on squared. So now let's plug this into there. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get the period of the pendulum is 2 pi root mass of my object, r. What r? What, what's r again? In this case, r is how long the pendulum is. It's the length of my pendulum. So L squared all over MGL. Masses cancel out. This L cancels out. What I end up with 
is 2 pi times root L over G is the period of the pendulum. So now, knowing that, knowing that you're doing it on Earth, your homework for this evening, after you've watched this, is to not get seasick while I'm pulling this around. Let's go back and look at this. Your homework is to tell me what is the length of this string. Are you figuring out the period? Ooh, is that 10 degrees? Let's let that. I may have exceeded my small angle approximation.